Okay, good morning. Welcome to Hampton Base High School. My name is Christopher Richard, and it is an honor to serve as the principal here uh, at Hampton Base and uh, as host to the very first uh, enlisted and service academy recognition ceremony for the Hampton Base, South Hampton, and West Hampton Beach High Schools. Uh, to begin our ceremony, I'm going to ask that everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and singing of our national anthem by Hampton Base senior Eva Bianchi. At this time, I'll ask the American Legion Hand Aldridge Post 924 to please present the colors. Hello, God, that's Dan Hood, Rifleman, Rich Holder, Home, Forward, Home. Detail Hall, Left Door, Right Face, Reset, Home. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale rollers o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly. And the rockets break the land, the bombs bursting in their gay proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet away? Thank you, Ava. About one more round of applause for Ava. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
mystery to us here in Hampton Bay is that uh, Eva, who's heading to Muhlenberg in the fall, is going to be uh, studying performing arts. Uh, very talented young lady. So, Eva, thank you. Yeah. At this time, I would like to introduce our superintendent of schools, Mr. Lars Cunningham. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to Hampton Bays. This is an exciting new event that um, the West Hampton Beach, South Hampton, and Hampton Bays school districts uh, put together over the last six weeks, really, um, to come together as a community to thank and congratulate uh, some really special young men and women. As we begin this morning, I'd like to offer a welcome to some of our special guests here. Representing on stage here, the Hampton Bays Board of Education, President Kevin Springer, Vice President Rich Joslin, High School Principal <coughs> Christopher Richard, and our High School Associate Principal, Mr. Eric Ferraro. Good morning. <laughs> From the South Hampton School District, Board of Education Vice President Jackie Robinson, Trustee James McKenna, Trustee Soonhee Sherwood Dudley, Superintendent Dr. Nick Dino, Dino, High School Principal Dr. Brian Zahn, and our Tuckahoe Superintendent of Schools, Lenny Skogovic. Good morning. <laughs> and to our West in West Hampton Beach, good morning to President Suzanne, Board of Education President Suzanne Mench, Trustee Joyce Donison, Superintendent Mike Rade and high school principal, Dr. Christopher Hart. <laughs> this morning we have with us New York State Assemblyman Fred Thiel. Good morning. <laughs> Representing us at Southampton Town Hall, Councilman John Bouvier is with us this morning. <laughs> Our commander for the Veterans of Foreign Wars, Post 5350 in West Hampton, Mr. Bill Hughes, good morning, good morning. <laughs> Southampton Village Police Sergeant and United States Navy Veteran, David Dorchak, thank you for being here, Sergeant. <laughs> Hilton Crosby, Director of Heart of the Hamptons, good morning. <laughs> this is Julie Crowley, President of the Rotary Club of Hampton Bays. Rick Martell, past president of the Southampton Kiwanis. <laughs> Members of the United States military, past and present, are with us this morning, and I welcome our recruiters, especially, who take as seriously their role to protect our seniors and give them opportunities to succeed as we do. Staff Sergeant Matthew McCarthy from the United States Army is here. Good morning. <laughs> Staff Sergeant Marzak from the United States Marine Corps was called to uh, Garden City this morning and sends his regrets. And we also welcome Petty Officer Jasper Sue Kamen from the United States Navy. <laughs> Certainly our special guests include treasured relatives, parents, and guests. They're seated in the middle here. These are uh, these people in the audience are the foundation for why these young people are sitting on the stage today and welcome new families. <laughs> and our most honored guest, the 12 young men and women sitting on stage here who have made a commitment to national service for more than <laughs> So the best form of flattery is imitation. And today's ceremony, the idea for today's ceremony is a stolen one. We stole it from our friends in Brookhaven Town, Williams, uh, made specifically modeled off of the William Floyd, Bellport, Longwood, and Patuck Medford School District. Um, in Brookhaven Town, there's a chapter of an organization, the only one in New York State, <coughs> called Our Community Salutes. OCS is a model because of its very simple mission, to be the first to say thank you to young people dedicating themselves to national service in the United States military. When I learned about what Bob and his team were doing for students in those school districts, my next call was to Dr. Dino and Mr. Rudet to gauge their interest in a similar event here in Southampton Town. Without hesitation, 
Their answer was yes. The boards of education in each of our communities resounding answer was yes. And here we are today. Our next phone call were to community partners. They're listed in your program. We said, is there any way that you can help? Resoundingly, yes, what do you need? We're in. We can't do things in our West Hampton, Hampton Bays, and Southampton communities without those partnerships. So please take a moment and look at your programs today. And if you see any of those community partners out and about, offer them, offer them some thanks. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to members of the Hampton Bays High School Symphonic Band. The band is under the direction of Mrs. Jennifer Halsey. Most of these seniors are, most of these musicians are seniors. A few juniors snuck in this morning, that's fine. Uh, but most of them are seniors, and for many of them, this is the last time they're going to play formally at Hampton Bays High School. So um, it's a fitting performance because it's an important morning. Members of the audience, uh, you're going to hear uh, the marches for each of the branches of the military. If you serve or are serving, please feel free to stand as your march is being performed. Mrs. Halsey.
now to recognize the individual seated before you on stage, they've each made a serious commitment. It said that only 1% of the eligible in our nation choose to make the, make the decision to serve, only 1%. So seated before you are the 1%, a group of seniors who every person in this room and beyond is very proud of. It was Abraham Lincoln who said that any nation that does not honor its heroes will not long endure. And thankfully in our East End communities, we embrace that value. We gather together on September 11th, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, July 4th, at community gatherings to pay respect and thanks. We thank veterans for their service and sacrifices that they made so that we might enjoy freedom. We honor those who serve today, those who serve in an all volunteer military that solves problems at home and around the world every day. And today, our three communities honor our newest heroes, these 12 young men and women on stage. Each comes from a fantastic school district. Each took advantage of numerous opportunities that each of our districts offered kids. And each, when faced with choosing the path that leads from the graduation stage next month, chose a career of service to our nation. So to fulfill the thoughts of Abraham Lincoln, our nation, and more intimately, our East End communities endure because we gather here to recognize a new group, these young men and women who are about to make the commitment to serve. So we're going to recognize each individual by school district. As the event took shape over the last six weeks, more and more partners stepped up, wanting to contribute, wanting to offer a symbol, a token, a contribution of their gratitude. So there are many items you're leaving with today, like a swag bag, sort of, but more important than that. Each has a special meaning for the responsibility that you're undertaking. First, a thank you to our three respective booster clubs who are giving you one last piece of green, maroon, and purple spirit wear before your life becomes a sea of camouflage and red, white, and blue. Those bags are under your chair. Um, Southampton, uh, yours are off to the side, just about, uh, off the stage there. Inside these bags are special recognitions from our elected leaders with certificates of proclamation from Senator Ken LaValle, Assemblyman Fred Thiel, County Executive Steve Ballone, Town Supervisor Jay Schneiderman, and members of the Southampton Town Board. <laughs> Additionally, you're going to find in each bag a pocket constitution of the United States of America. In a few short weeks, you're going to take an oath as you head to boot camp and training to uphold this document. It's important that you have one. It's important that you take one with you. Heading off to boot camp, West Point or Lehigh University in the coming months is going to present you with a few unanticipated expenses, we're sure. So thanks to our community partners at Montauk Bus, Stony Brook Southampton Hospital, Statewide Roofing and BBS Architects, they're partners of each of our three school districts. Each of you will receive a $250 scholarship to help defray a particular expense that you might face in the coming month. And a t-shirt, thanks to our three booster clubs that commemorates this Hamptons class this first class Hamptons class of servicemen and women. As we, each, as we introduce each individual, we'll ask that members of that school district join at the middle table with mom, dad, or the service member special guest. Each student will receive a plaque commemorating his or her commitment to serve, and also an American flag that was flown last week over each of our three high schools for each student in their name. Families, you will receive a blue star flag that you can see hanging behind the table there. That flag was first displayed during World War I. It soon became the symbol for families to display in their homes. And that flag singles to, signals to community members, to neighbors and friends, that they have a loved one from that home serving our nation. As you send your sons and daughters to service, please hang this flag in your window at home so that your community and continue to support them. Let's begin with Southampton High School. Dr. Dino, Board of Education members, Dr. Zahn. As each student comes up, 
Julia is going to take an official photo and we'll get those to the school districts in the coming days. I'd like to say thank you to Bhupati Ramkelawan, who will join the United States Air Force. Bhupati's flag was flown over South Hampton High School on May 27th. Moms and dads, get your cameras out too. That's totally, that's absolutely. Mom and dad stay up there because oh. Uvanishar Ramkelawan also enlisted in the United States. Uvanishar flag was flown up to Hampton on May twenty first. <laughs> Thomas Gabriel. Thomas has received a commission to, att to attend the United States Mil Military Academy at West Point. Thomas, congratulations. <laughs> Nicholas Maddock. Nicholas will serve as a member of the ROTC at Lehigh University before his commission to the United States Army. His flag was flown over Southampton High School on May 28th. David Nava, United States Marine Corps. David's flag was flown in his name on May 20th.
United States, enlisting in the United States Marine Corps, Jason Villa Ortega. Jason's flag is flown in his honor on May 27th. in the United States Navy. Austin's flag was flown on May 24th. <laughs> for the graduates from Southampton. <laughs> At this time, Dr. Dino will present the students from West Hampton Beach. West Hampton Beach officials, please take your spot. Jane Alvarez, United States Army. Jane's flag was flown over West Hampton Beach High School on May 20th, Christina Marciano, United States Marine Corps. Yeah. Christina's flag was flown over West Hampton Beach High School on May 17, 2009. Thank you for your service, West Hampton Beach. I'd now like to have Mr. Clemenson and the Hampton Bay Schools team move to the table for their graduating bayman to be recognized. Kevin McNamara, United States Army. Kevin's flag was flown here at HBHS on May 22nd, Daniel Grisales, United States Marine Corps.
Daniel's flag was flown here on campus on May 21st, 2019. Michael Blanco, United States Navy. Michael's flag was flown at Hampton Bays High School on May 20th, 2019. Congratulations to each of these young men and women, and thank you once again for your commitment to serve. At this time, I'd like to invite the commander of, I'm sorry, commanders, yeah, commander of our local VFW post to the microphone, Commander Billy Hughes. It is truly an honor and a privilege to represent. I'm the county commander of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. I'm also the post commander of West Hampton Beach. And I am also a member of the American Legion post right here in Hampton Bays. This is a proud moment for us all, all our veterans, the school administrators, and mostly the families and yourselves. Um, I, I'll be brief, but uh, I, I'm going to try to remember a quote that I like. So I'm kind of stealing something here. Leaders are not born, they are made. And they are made just like anything else, through hard work. It is that goal or any goal that is worthwhile. So try to remember that in the beginning, whether you're a cadet at West Point, a private, an airman, a seaman, a recruit, you know, a, a new recruit in the Marine Corps, in the beginning, obey the rules. If it is not illegal and it is not immoral, obey that rule. You'll get a chance as you grow to color outside the lines. That simple advice, I think, worked for me. Your association with the United States military will last forever, I think. Mine began in 1969. The organizations that I'm affiliated with through the military as a veteran are so important to me and to the health of this nation. I currently have my own son serves on active duty in the United States Air Force as a captain and was a graduate of this high school where he began, he began some of the leadership that he now holds. Congratulations to you all. Um, all success in your career, and congratulations to your families. Thank you, Commander Hughes. This time I'd like to introduce Staff Sergeant, United States Army Staff Sergeant Matthew Murphy. Uh, he has a special presentation uh, by the United States Army. Morning, friends, family, distinguished guests, students. Uh, thank you for having me. 
Uh, I want to say how much of an honor it is to be invited out. So thank you, sir, for that. Appreciate it. Uh, I know we're here tonight, uh, or today rather, uh, to honor, it's been a long week, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> we're here today to uh, honor those uh, 12 students who have uh, stepped up and decided to make that call to serve. I could not have said it better myself. Uh, it is <laughs> incredibly difficult uh, to serve in the military. You are becoming part of the less than 1%. Don't ever forget that. Uh, very important. Uh, it is not you that is just serving them. So if I may, at this time, I'd like to bring the family members of Kevin and Jane on up, uh, as well as Kevin and Jane, if you want to come to the center. I have a little special surprise. No, unexpected. Unexpected. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <clears throat> as I said, uh, when you guys have made the commitment to serve and grow with your right hand, it's for you protect the Constitution of the United States. Uh, it wasn't just you, right? It takes a, a village, as they say, uh, and that's why on behalf of the United States Army, uh, I want to present this special plaque to the family members, because uh, without the friends, family, the support that you provide to your, your sons and daughters, uh, wouldn't have been made possible. So I'm going to read off what this plaque says real quick, but uh, it says, when service members serve, they aren't the only ones who serve. Their families serve also. The sacrifice the parent of a military member renders is beyond compare. As a parent, you willingly offer your blessing when your child is compelled to serve their country. If it were not for you as parents, for your child's service, America would not enjoy all the freedoms that exist today. The Army is internally grateful for the keen foresight and support you offer your child through their service. You are now part of the Army family. Thank you for your trust and confidence in your child's decision to be part of less than 1% of service members who defend this great nation. Thank you. time, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker today, Andrew Sierra, United States Marine Corps, retired. Andrew uh, spent a career, you can read his biography in your program, spent a career serving our nation and has is back to school now uh, in pursuit of a second career. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Sierra. Distinguished guests, parents, graduating students. Um, I grew up in a small town just like this, uh, really out in New Hampshire, so I'm a, I'm a northerner. I'm a Red Sox fan, I'm sorry. Uh, there we go, there we go. Um, but there wasn't much for me in a way that could be progressive, if that makes sense. The I graduated high school and I worked a lot of hospitality jobs and one day the recruiter called for the Marine Corps and said, uh, I'd like to sit down and talk with you. And from that point, from that day, it was in January of 1997. And March 11th, I stood on the Yellow Footprints in Paris Island, South Carolina. It was a big change. Um, how would I say it? That unexpected from your normal day to day life. Uh, I didn't know what I was getting into, but now that the information age is out there, you have a lot of information to give. The parents and loved ones, all I ask for you is to support them. They are going to be going through the ro most roughest time that they have ever 
been through in their life. I just ask that you support them because this is the biggest decision, not only from a parent's side of view, but also for the young adult. And I thank you for all, for what you guys done and what you guys are going to become. So just but my parting gift to you is even though it's the toughest time, it's not, it's not the end. Take it. I did 21 and a half years and every day was a new adventure. Look at it like that. Every day is not going to be the same. Just keep your mind open and uh, be flexible because that's what the military is all about, is being flexible and changing on, on a turn of a dime. Okay? Thank you. Andrew's a great example of life uh, of military and after the military and as a member of the Student Veterans Association at Suffolk Community College. So as you continue, uh, you've made the first decision, you're taking the first step, and wherever that might lead you, um, there are associations and groups like the SVA and the Legion and the VFW that are ready to welcome you into a lifelong community. Thank you, Andrew. At this time, I'd like to introduce our public officials who are super supportive of public education, particularly in the town of Southampton. We rely on them as they advocate for us in Albany, a town hall, um, in Hop Hog at the county legislature, and um, we certainly thank them for that. This morning's breakfast was uh, the result of, uh, or was the product of our Hampton Bays High School uh, CTE culinary program. We run, a, run an in-house program that was uh, born a few years ago uh, with some uh, targeted state aid and support from our Senator Ken Levac. And I'd like to introduce Senator Laval to the stage. Good morning, everyone. Um, what a privilege to be here, to be part of this uh, ceremony. Congratulations to our young people. Thank you for your willingness to serve our nation. It is a um, great thing to see you in your youth beginning your careers, and you know what you want to do. You're focused on something that is important to you, but important to us and our nation. So I simply say, good luck to you. Remember where you came from. Remember what you have learned and um, and my father used to say to me, don't be fancy, just remember the basics and you'll get through life. Good luck to you. I'd like to welcome New York State Assemblyman Fred Field. Thank you so much, and it's an honor and a privilege to be here with these 12 graduating seniors who are about to enter upon military. I want to give my thanks to the Hampton Bay School District, the South Hampton School District, the West Hampton Beach School District for putting this kind of ceremony together. Uh, I've participated for many years in the ceremony that they have in Brookhaven with William Floyd and Belport and Patrick Medford. It's inspiring, and today's ceremony has been equally inspiring as we wish, uh, we say thank you and, and wish, uh, give good wishes to our, our students here that are about to embark upon military career. And uh, you know, it's the end of the school year, graduation is looming. Uh, there's lots of ceremonies going on now to, to uh, uh, honor academic achievements, to honor athletic achievements. It is altogether fitting 
that we also recognize these students who are going to make that commitment to national service. Uh, as was said, less than 1%, a very, very important 1%. Our freedoms, our constitution, what we enjoy every day depends on the service of people like these young students that are about to embark upon the military. So to you, the 12 students who we are recognizing here today, uh, I say thank you. Thank you for your commitment to, to undertake military service. And thank you for the service that you're about to undertake on behalf of our nation and behalf of our community. And also thank you to the families, to the parents, because they are sacrificing too. Uh, parents, they're very, very proud, but there's also a little bit of trepidation in there when, when our kids go off, and certainly when they go off into the military. Uh, so we wish you, we wish your family all the best. We wish you a, a great career in the military. We hope and we, we pray that you come home safe. Uh, it will be a great adventure. Uh, at the same time, you're providing great service. So congratulations, good luck, and thank you again for the service you're about to render. Included in your package is a special proclamation from our county executive, Steve Ballone. He sends his regrets this morning. He's representing Suffolk County in France at, as uh, we recognize the 75th anniversary at Normandy. Uh, but you certainly have, a, you have a, a special recognition in there from the county executive. Representing us at Town Hall, I'd like to introduce Town Councilman John Bouvier. Thank you very much. I, uh, Bill, I, I tried to remember a quote that affected me in my life, but I, I couldn't remember it as well, so I wrote it down to, to speak about. My, uh, my grandfather was, uh, was a West Point uh, graduate and served with Patton's Army, and my brother enlisted and went to Vietnam. I went a different direction. I, uh, I consider myself a Navy man, and I worked uh, underwater in demolitions and things like that. So you can imagine during our Navy games, uh, I was relegated to the back of the room, typically by, by the three army guys. Um, I'm reminded of and my grandfather, who was a serious man but did not take himself seriously. Uh, he reminded me of duty, honor, and country quite often. And I think there's a great quote that I'm going to read from, and I hope you indulge me, uh, from uh, General MacArthur, who, who we attribute that, that quote to. These three hallowed words, duty, honor, country, hallowed words reverently dictate what ought to be, what you can be, what you will be. They are your rallying points to build courage when courage seems to fail, to regain faith when there seems to be little cause for faith, to greet hope when hope becomes forlorn. But these are some of the things that they do. They build your basic character, they mold you for the future, the roles as custodians of our nation's defense. They make you strong enough to know when you are weak and brave enough to face yourself when you are afraid. They teach you to be proud and unbending and honest failure, but humble and gentle in success. Not to substitute words for actions, not to seek the path of comfort, but to face the stress and spur of difficulty and challenge, to learn to stand up to the storm, but to have compassion on those who fall, to master yourself before you master others. To have a heart that is clean, a goal that is high, to learn to laugh, yet never forget how to weep. To reach into the future, yet never neglect the past. To be serious, yet never take yourself too seriously. To be modest in what you will remember, the simplicity of true greatness, the open mind of true wisdom, and the meekness of true strength. I'm reminded of John Kennedy who said, don't ask what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And I think you guys, all of you, men and women alike, have truly reached out and, and worked to that goal. And I appreciate everything you do. And you remind me of many years ago when I had these conversations with my grandfather. So on behalf of the town board, we wish you the very best of these first steps in your service to your country. And we thank you very, very much. And congratulations and best wishes and Godspeed. We're nearing the end of our ceremony, and it reminds me of something that 
uh, Billy, our commander, says in, in supporting veterans, it doesn't take a lot to say thank you. It doesn't take a long time to say thank you. And so the hour that we spent here, uh, I think, is a great first step for our collective boards of education and school district leadership teams to uh, start a tradition on the East End where our school communities can be the first to say thank you to each of you. Lots of family members and special guests, I'm sure, couldn't be here today. We're live streaming this ceremony on YouTube, uh, on the HB YouTube channel. And, and uh, that will be archived there. So we'll get that link to the school districts and you can push that out to families and save that for yourselves uh, as a special memory for today. As we depart, I'll wish you a final good luck and thank you and a special last month of your career as a high school senior. Uh, we're all proud of you, we all support you, and um, to echo the words we've heard, look forward to welcoming you home soon. At this time, I'd like to ask the American Legion and Aldrich Post 924 to assemble to retire the colors, and I'll ask each of you to please rise. Thank you all for being here today. That concludes our formal ceremony. Please stay, be comfortable, take photos, and all the best to you and your families. Thank you.